Funding a Binance Smart Chain wallet is confusing, but of course, we are going to break it down in this video so you know exactly what to do. So please pay very close attention and watch this video until the very end in order that you do not send crypto to the wrong blockchain and lose money. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. We're going to talk about three things in this video. The first is understanding the differences between all of these blockchains. This is very important. The second is how to actually fund your Binance Smart Chain wallet. And the third is how to transfer assets from a different blockchain into assets that are now compatible for Binance Smart Chain. So let's jump into number one. First, I want you to understand this concept so that you don't lose money. There are multiple blockchains in the picture. If we go to Binance.com and we look at Ethereum, when we go ahead and withdraw it, we'll see that there are a few options for transfer network. If we click on here, Ethereum, this is the regular way that we send Ethereum, ERC20, and we're gonna pay a high gas fee that is right now becoming common on Ethereum. But also we see here that we can choose different transfer networks. We can choose Binance Chain, BEP2, or Binance Smart Chain, BEP20. So there are multiple blockchains in play. So if we go to Binance token, BNB on, on Binance.com, and we want to withdraw it, there is going to be two options. There's going to be Binance Chain, BEP2. This is the normal Binance Chain. This is the one that you might be used to or the one that you're using in the background and you don't even realize. And then there's Binance Smart Chain. And the first time that you click on this actually, Binance.com will ask you three questions to make sure you understand what you're doing. Because if you send Binance to the wrong place, then it will get lost. So if you have BNB token on a wallet and you send it, it is by default going to send it on BEP2, Binance Chain. And if you're on Binance.us, remember there's Binance.com and Binance US, when you go ahead and withdraw, it won't give you the option. It will only give you BEP2. So you always want to make sure that if you're sending Binance token to a Binance Smart Chain wallet, that you are selecting Binance Smart Chain. But of course, we don't have that option on Binance.us. But of course, I'm going to show you guys how to get around this. What I do like is that even if you want to go ahead and send regular BNB tokens to a Binance Smart Chain on Binance.us, it won't let you. If I go over here and I want to send BNB to my Binance Smart Chain wallet so that I can go interact with protocols now such as Pancake Swap, Pancake Swap, it won't let me. If I paste this here, it'll show the withdrawal address format is wrong. So it's already not going to let me send it. So if you're outside of the United States and you have Binance.com, it is very simple. You go to Binance.com, you buy BNB, and then when you go ahead and you withdraw it, select Binance Smart Chain, and then it will show up in your Binance Smart Chain wallet. Now, if you're in the United States, how do you get around this? Well, let's say you already have BNB on Binance US or you have BNB on Trust Wallet. You can still create a Binance.com account without full verification. Binance.com is not for people in the United States, but that's only if you want the full features. You can still create a Binance.com account even if you live in, in the United States with limited abilities. So you can still do deposits and withdrawals. So I actually have done this just to make sure that before I tell you this, it's accurate. You can go ahead on Trust Wallet or Binance US, send your BNB to Binance.com. And that, remember, is gonna be the BEB, BEP2 pathway. And then it will show up on Binance.com. Again, you're not fully verified, but you have deposits and withdrawals. Then from within Binance.com, you take your BNB, and instead of this time withdrawing it to Binance BNB BEP2, you're gonna select Binance Smart Chain. So if we get my wallet that I just copied over here, I can paste in this box over here, and then I'm gonna select an amount. We'll do 0.03 BNB, and then we are going to submit it. And then it's gonna ask me for all of this verification. All right, so now that's complete. It will show up in my Binance Smart Chain wallet. So I was ready to upload this video. And right before that, I found something out that's going to make everyone's life much easier. So I'm going to insert it right here in the video. I was on Binance's website and it showed that the easiest way to transfer BEP2 tokens to BEP20 tokens is via the Binance Chain Wallet extension. So I went ahead, I downloaded the extension, and I just played around with it to make sure that it actually worked. 
So I went to the regular BNB wallet. Rem remember, BEP2. And I sent some of my BNB, my BNB tokens to the wallet. And then trying to figure out how am I going to transfer it, I went over here to Binance Smart Chain. I copied the address. I went back to Binance Chain Network and I did send. And I entered the address and it said over here, no, cross chain transfer to Binance Smart Chain. So I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but anyways, I just sent it. And then I went back to my Binance Smart Chain wallet and it converted it into BNB for Binance Smart Chain. If I look at my activity here, it was received, but still I wasn't sure if this was an error or not. So I took the address and I went to Binance Scan to confirm this was valid and it showed up in the wallet. So then I went back just to double confirm and make sure this can actually be used. I went to PancakeSwap, I connected my Binance Chain smart wallet and I made a swap for Cake and if we come back to my wallet, let's see if it actually went through. And yes, I have Cake here. So I made this whole video already with you know sending back and forth to Binance.com, Binance US. I didn't wanna get rid of it, I wanted to keep it there but I wanted to update you guys that this method is much easier. Download Binance Smart Chain extension, and with this method, you can swap BEP2 tokens for BEP20 tokens. So there's another way you can just simply buy Binance Smart Chain tokens that will be compatible on a Binance Smart Chain wallet. Like we said, the easiest way is just going Binance.com. You can buy with fiat, but if you're living in the United States, you can't do that. You gotta go through this whole transfer process. Another way you can do this is with Trust Wallet. So you don't have to create a Binance account. You go to Trust Wallet and there are going to be different cryptocurrencies that you can buy. You wanna make sure you're not buying BNB, BEP2. You wanna buy Binance Smart Chain, BEP20. Remember, these are two separate transfer networks. So in Trust Wallet, we're gonna to go to the upper right-hand corner and we're gonna see there's BNB and BNB Smart Chain. So you wanna make sure you click this toggle and that it's on. Then you go back to your home screen, click on Binance Smart Chain, and then in the upper right hand corner, select buy, and then you can buy BNB that's compatible for Binance Smart Chain with a credit card directly with fiat money. Once that's complete, you can actually go ahead directly with Trust Wallet and interact with Binance Smart Chain protocols. If you have an Android phone and you have the application, once you're in the app and you go down to the bottom, there's gonna be this button over here. It's gonna show you these decentralized applications and you can click on them. Right here we see PancakeSwap and you can start interacting. But unfortunately, Trust Wallet had to remove the DAP browser to comply with Apple App Store guidelines. So for people that have an iPhone, it's not going to be in the regular app, but there is a way around it. I'll leave these directions down below. How you can get the DAP browser on iOS, you will need to install TestFlight. Then after installing TestFlight, you will need to install Trust Wallet again, and then you'll have access to the DAP browser. But if you're not doing it on the phone, same thing. Once you have BNB or Binance Smart Chain token on Trust Wallet, you go into, Smart, into, into Trust Wallet, you click on Binance Smart Chain, you click withdraw, and you'll send it to your Binance Smart Chain address. There's also a lot of confusion about all of these wallets. If we go to something like PancakeSwap and connect our wallet, we'll see MetaMask, Trust Wallet, Math Wallet, Binance Chain Wallet, and people get confused. They really all function the same way. Once you set up MetaMask Wallet to work with Binance Smart Chain, they all work the same way. If you don't know how to do that, I did make a video on setting up Binance Smart Chain on MetaMask. You can go ahead and click the link above or you can watch it at the end of this video. And what I really like though about MetaMask Wallet is that it is harder to make a mistake. We already mentioned that these blockchains are separate. There's Ethereum, there's BEP2, and there is BEP20. So often I hear people asking the question, what if I send Ethereum to my Binance Smart Chain wallet? So this won't work. But luckily, MetaMask uses the same address for Ethereum and for Binance Smart Chain. So if I'm over here, I can see this is my address on Binance Smart Chain. If I switch it to the Ethereum mainnet, it's the same address. So if you are mistaken and you send some Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain to this address on MetaMask and you don't see it here, all you have to do is click up here on the top, go to the mainnet, and then your tokens will show up. 
And again, always make sure, especially with Binance, that you're always doing a test first, especially since the fees are so low. And I wanna come quickly right back to withdrawing. If we go to Binance.com, we see there is, like we mentioned, there is BEP2 and then Binance Smart Chain. Another way you'll tell the difference is that when you're sending with Binance Chain, the regular one, there's going to be the address, of course, and a memo. And then if you're sending to Binance Smart Chain, there's just going to be the address and no memo. Another thing is that a Binance Chain BEP2 address will start with BNB and a Binance Smart Chain address will start with 0x. Now coming back to PancakeSwap, if we're on the exchange, this is where a lot of people get tripped up. They're gonna come here and do select token and they're gonna see ADA, Cardano, and they're gonna think, whoa, I can send Cardano to Binance Smart Chain, but this is not exactly what's going on. This is not actually Cardano. This is a synthetic version of Cardano built on Binance Smart Chain, BEP20. And I would have liked if PancakeSwap made this a little more clear so that people don't get confused and actually send Cardano or a different cryptocurrency from a different blockchain to Binance Smart Chain. They did do this with Bitcoin, see BTCB. I would have liked them to do it with Cardano as well. But this brings us to the third topic of this video. You actually can take assets from a different blockchain and convert them into assets that are compatible for Binance Smart Chain. And the way you could do this is with Binance's bridge. If you go to PancakeSwap and you click over here on bridge, it's going to take you to this page. And on this page, you can actually take crypto from other blockchains and convert them. So if we take Cardano over here, we're gonna select over here, we're gonna make sure it's ADA network, Cardano's network, not Binance Chain network, ADA network, and then we're gonna convert it into BEP20 tokens. Make sure it selects on Binance Smart Chain. If you click Binance Chain network, it will actually let you know unsupported swap. So once you have that set up, you can convert it. But let's do a more practical example with Ethereum, since, is, since this is the asset that most people are trying to convert. So if we want to do this with Ethereum, we're gonna select Ethereum and then over here, make sure you're on the Ethereum network. Again, very important. And then we're going to convert it to Binance Smart Chain. And we're gonna put in the amount that we want to send. And then we are going to hit next. And then over here, it's gonna give you a few options how you can actually make this transaction. The first one says, I will send tokens from Binance.com. If you select that, it actually won't let you go to the next stage. And it says instead just go to Binance and you can withdraw it the normal way. As I showed you in the beginning, if we already have Binance, like let, let's say we already have Ethereum on Binance, right? We go here and we select Binance Smart Chain as the transfer network. So over here, it's not even letting us choose this option. It won't let us choose two or three, but we can choose number four. I will send tokens from my own wallet. So you select next. And then it's going to bring you to this page. You're going to, con you're going to confirm everything. And then once you convert, confirm it, it is going to show you this address. So you are going to copy this address, right? So I copied this address and I need to deposit 0 0.01 to Ethereum. I'm going to go to my MetaMask wallet. I'm going to select Ethereum mainnet, go to Ethereum, select send, enter the address, put the amount that I'm going to send and I'm putting 0 0.01 to Ethereum. And then of course we have those Ethereum gas fees, seven, $9 right now. We're gonna select next. And then once we confirm this, it will eventually show up in our wallet. So this is what we can do with a lot of these assets. What we're doing here is we're sending money, we're sending crypto to this smart contract that is going to perform the bridge for us. Now, after you do this with whatever blockchain that you're selecting, it can vary, it can take a different amount of time. And you might be worried, wondering where is my cryptocurrency? So the way that you can check this is by going to bscscan.com. So you're going to get your wallet address. Remember your Binance Smart Chain wallet address, and you're going to copy your address, enter it here in the Explorer, and it is gonna show you what's actually in your wallet. So you might, you might do these transactions and say, where is my Binance version of Ethereum? I don't see it. If you go here, you'll know if it's actually in your wallet or not. But let's say you're on the screen and it shows that you actually do have these assets, but you still don't see it. This is because you now have to add a token to your MetaMask wallet. If we go here in MetaMask, 
and we want to go to the Binance Smart Chain wallet, these are our assets. So if we don't see something here that we know we have, we click add token and we search for it. There's a lot of different tokens here that we can add, right? But if I'm looking for my Ethereum Binance token that I can't find here, you know, I might think that it's gone, but it's not. We have to add a custom token. So the way we do this is you go to bscscan.com, go to tokens, BEP20 tokens by market cap. You can look through for whatever token that you bought, but right here it's at the top, Binance Peg Ethereum token. We're gonna select that. And then over here, this is the token contract address, right over here in the upper right hand corner. We are going to copy that. And then we are going to go right back to our MetaMask wallet. And we are going to add a custom token. Remember on Binance Smart Chain, add a token, custom token, copy and paste. There it is, Ethereum, there is our symbol. Next, add tokens and then it will show up in our wallet. So if you ever have any assets that you're not sure where they are, always add a custom token. And this is the same thing for Ethereum. You might go ahead and buy some NFTs or buy some cryptocurrencies on the Ethereum network, and you're gonna sh it's gonna show that it's not in your wallet. Don't panic, same thing, scroll down, add a token. You're gonna search for your token. If you don't see it in the regular search, you're gonna have to go find it on Etherscan, the same way we found it on Binance Scan and you're gonna add a custom token. So one of the main things about this video is that whatever you do, always test out with a small amount, especially if you're doing Binance tokens and things built on Binance, the fees are extremely cheap. But even if you're going it to go ahead and do a major swap on the Binance bridge with Ethereum or Cardano or something else, always test it out with a small amount small amount first, even if it's going to cost you five or $10, because it's better to do a test for five or $10 than to make a big mistake and lose thousands of dollars. I hope that this video helped. And if you enjoyed it, please show your support and like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.